Working wisdom. Today we are in Santa's little workshop. We're um, we're making something fit Christmassy, um, and we're exploring um, something new. Well, something new that I've not shown before on the scroll saw, um, and it's like an angled cut. Um, what we would use that for is, um, you know, you can do an angled cut on um, things that make make like wedge shapes. Um, and also, you know, I'll show you a couple of other projects that this, this can apply to. Um, it's a really cool little thing. Okay. Sorry about that. I got a little bit distracted. Had some, uh, something playing in the background, um, but we're all on board now. Um, that again, we're, we're making like an angle cut. So we're going to throw the head of the, um, of the scroll saw over and cut like a, a wedge shape. Um, you can do this on... Um, the, the trade machines, the, the whole head tilts on um, on the craft machines, you get the table tilting. Um, so it's a really easy little thing. Um, and we're not throwing off at crazy angles or anything like that. It's a nice, simple, um, simple little project. Um, but less about the project today and more about that kind of uh, a slightly different technique um, on what we can do. Cool. So Let's have a little look at some bits on the bench. Um, there's a few bits I want to show you. Um, this uh, template, by the way, is downloadable. If you wanted to have a go at, at this, this is the uh, little Three Wise Kings, and they're going to be following the, the Star of Bethlehem. Okay. Here's one we kind of um, had a go at. Um, there's a couple of things on here I wanted to show you where I made a little mistake and, and things like that. Um, and it's all good. It's all part of the learning process. Um, so we'll we'll go through it. First thing, um, like I say, you can print this off. This is a, a downloadable PDF. Um, that's just at the bottom under the video where the links are. I'm just going to chop off our three wise men. We're going to leave the star for now. We'll, we'll revisit that one. But for now... We want our three kings, or the magi, or whatever we call them. And we are going to put a bit of copy decks on the back. This is my preferred method. Um, it is a little bit stinky, if I'm honest. It's not, it's not a pleasant smell. Um, but there's loads of ways you could do this. You could use a bit of carbon paper to transfer it on. You could... Um, you know, just stick it on with a bit of masking tape and print stick, something like that. Um, but I really like this stuff. It's it's just so easy and it's nice and clean. It saves me a little job afterwards of potentially sanding off that carbon or um, you know sticky residue from from other uh, bits. So we've got our three kings, and I'm not putting them on the um, on the bottom of the board. We're going to raise it up a little bit because these need to be contained right the way round, um, and we need to do this in a, in a single cut. I'll show you how that works in just a minute. So, template is stuck down. Nice and easy so far. Um, now, what we need to do is, is drill a few little holes. Okay, um, I've got my drill here, and I've got this really tiny little drill bit. Okay, it's, it's just big enough for the blade to squeeze through the hole when we thread it in. Um, if you go much smaller than this, the chuck struggles to hold it. And of course we need to go right the way through. So we need to just check um, that that's gonna plunge right the way through. A little backing board so I don't drill into my bench. And I'm gonna pick some areas where when we pull these out, when we, we pull them out of the, the piece of timber, that our hole gets kind of um, you know hidden at the back of that shape. So we're going between the legs. Um, sometimes I'll use a little bradel just to get it going. But this um, this drill bit's so small, it's pretty good. It's gonna make its way through. And let's go in here. Oops. So just get it across on that glue. Doesn't matter that we've lost a bit of the template. You can always um, pencil it back in 
or just you know use your imagination it's not a you know a difficult shape we're just coming up to a v here and um and yeah so that's it just make sure we've gone right the way through and we're good again there's not much breakout on the back if there was if you're using a bigger drill bit or something like that and you get these fibers split off just get a um a bit of abrasive whiz it over the back there um and then you're not rocking on the on the table of the of the scroll saw okay so we're coming over to the scroll saw. i'm just going to pop my project there for the minute um what i want to show you is actually under the table on this one so under here like we said before um we've got a little rack and pinion system got the bristol locking lever there which holds it all um rigid when when we're not tipping it and if I just push that one across, you'll see if we tilt the head, that's it, lovely. So you can see on that overhead camera just how much of a swing that goes over. And we've got 45 degrees in both directions there. Um, so we've got plenty of scope. Um, could be nice to, to cut little chamfers on things, um, but we're using it today to create a little wedge. And what I'm going to do is just kick it off and it's only a tiny bit two degrees we're going to lock off our bristol locking lever um, and then that's all nice and rigid again that's not going anywhere and um, before we get into our project we want to do a little test cut so i've got a little scrap of wood here and it's pretty much the same thickness as our project blank so what I'm going to do is is cut a little kind of semicircle in that. Let's pop that back out the way. Um, so on with the scroll saw. I'm going to pop it on the power there, and we've got that hooked up to extraction. And like this shape, I want to cut almost a little semicircle. Now the tilt is kicking over that way so the wedge wants to come this way and this is just a practice cut to make sure that we're good to go before we get into our project we don't want to cut them pieces and then they just come loose so I'm making a, a circle shape. Now, if I push it from the back, you can see how that piece is locked in because we've got that very slight wedge shape um, and it's come up about half the um, thickness of the material. Okay. And you can imagine if you were to cut one of these, and then cut another one next to it and another one next to it, you'll see those stacks start to pop up. And actually the inspiration behind um, this little this little project is something Colwyn showed me a few years ago. Um, a man called Jim Sterling makes these beautiful castles um, and they're just like that. They're cut in, in circles and then you pop them up from underneath and you get these lovely kind of um, spires and towers all coming up. Um, so check that out. Jim Sterling, he's got a book out on um our scroll saw castles a lovely little um project book um but yeah check it out and uh, using very much the same technique um for our little project today so um we're live here today don't forget um any questions you've got just chuck them in the chat we've got colin with us today he's looking after us on cameras and questions um so any questions you guys have um just call them out so we've got to think about it a little bit if the um the the blade is just um tilted that way that means i need to come around my project clockwise to um to create that wedge and we need to do it all in one cut we can't start here and then have another one start somewhere else and go in different directions because then you're going to get two parallel cuts going off in, in the same direction. It's not going to create that wedge. So we need to do this in, in one hit. 
So, back on with the scroll saw. And we're cutting out our first of our three kings. I've got a nice new blade on this, so it's really fast cutting. And if you've just swapped from a blunt blade to a, um, a sharp blade, which I've just done, um, you'll notice your, you have to slow the feed rate down just a little because you're kind of used to putting that extra little bit of pressure on to make the cut happen with the blunter blade. So using the blade to pivot on, kind of transferring my pressure to the back of the blade when we make those very quick transitions in direction. Constantly switching grip. And we'll just try and keep this flowing around nicely and this is a rough shape to follow we've given it quite um, Quite thick lines. On the on the PDF. Oops. So it doesn't matter if we drift off our line a little. So, once we come back round to that drill hole, we will have kind of relieved our first piece from the main bulk of the timber. And all being well, if our tests work properly, we should get that lovely little wedge. I'm coming in um, right up onto the side of that hole. And then it's not going to show on the actual piece that comes forward. So let's have a look what we've done here. Just bringing the project off. It will slip out the back um, because it's just that, um, you know, because it's a wedge, it will only work one way. And that's fitting really nicely. Sometimes you get a little bit of debris in there but we're pretty good on this one. And I just want to show you how lovely and clean that cut is off of that um, modified geometry blade. There's little to no breakout on the, on the back face of our, um, our little king on his camel. So I'm going to put that to one side rather than put it back because there's going to be points we might swing this off the table. We don't want it falling out the, the bottom. In through our next little um, kind of pilot hole, our, our hole to thread the blade through. And that's it. Same sort of thing. 
we're going to go around this shape and we remember we want to go clockwise let me pop my extractor back on so i've got three buttons here to to press So nice and quick around those um, those corners. Want to quickly whiz it around that quick change in direction. I find if I try and take it slow and be very precise, it usually ends up with a kind of a rounded look. When actually we kind of want a hard angle on this. That extractor's doing its job. There's no airborne dust. It's being thrown out the bottom. And just being extra careful in this section to not overlap those two little cuts. I'm just changing the shape up very slightly. And the one um, that's downloadable in the links there is A4. So slightly bigger than this one. I've, I've reduced the size of it to suit my bit of timber. And this is the, um, the, the popular or tulip that we use a lot of here. And I'm leaving this quite plain. I quite like the, um, the, the, just the look of the, the wood itself. Um, but of course you could paint in a background scene. You could have, um, you know, Bethlehem in the background, you could um, have the uh, the kind of um, the hut with, with Jesus and Mary and Joseph. So this is really just something to kind of get you thinking. I really like pyrography, so I would probably spend a little bit of time doing a bit of pyrography, maybe use a scorch marker to um, create some interesting hills and things in the background. So just testing each one as we go. Being a little bit careful. Um, because in this piece of timber, we've got our grain running this way. And you can imagine through these legs, although it's quite a thick piece and should have that kind of structural strength, we have got short grain running through here. So just be a little bit careful when you're um, taking these apart. Lovely. So that's two or three. How are we doing for time? So we're good. We're 20 minutes in. We've got two wise, uh, two wise men. And of course, these could be part of a little scene just by themselves. You know, you could cut out um, all sorts of different shapes. You could have the whole nativity in there with, um, you know, donkeys and sheep and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, again, something else you could do with this project.
So really quite tight, some of these, um, these points and curves. And there's something I want to show you on the kind of practice piece, I guess, we did of this one when I was kind of putting it together. It's, um, you know, it can be a little bit difficult to cut really sharp um, and to find points when you're cutting like this because there's no waste. You're, you've not got that luxury of being able to cut into the waste. Because actually the bit that's left behind is part of the project on this one. Oops. So we've got a question coming, I think. I'm just going to just come around this last little bit. And then we can... Um, have a look and answer your question. Again, I'm just coming up on this side of my drill hole because you want to leave that, I guess, a bit damaged. You want to leave that in behind and not actually on our leg of our camel on our free wise uh, one of our free wise men anywhere so that damage where we did um our, our drill hole when we bring that forward is going to be hidden back there in the little um little v of his legs okay hi everybody right. um yes it's colwyn here um i've got quite a smirk on my face reading some of the comments but let's go straight into maria uh, Maria from Wales's question: um, I have penguins in my nativity. In my nativity, <laughs> uh, if the, uh, this is my head's hurting thinking about this one, but if the table tilts rather than the arm, do you still need to cut clockwise? <laughs> so yeah, now sometimes it takes me a bit of thinking about. Um, yeah, it just you got to visualize which way it's kind of going. So if the table's tilting um down on the uh on the left then the wedge is going to be going that way you, really it's quite hard to kind of visualize it but when you've got your piece of timber let's have a little look i'll pull that arm out of the way oh, let's bring it down how to explain this so if we've got um a, a line like this if, let's come on. Let's come on to the um, the main camera here, Cohen. I can't. I can't do it in that little bit of space. Um, so you got to think of a wedge. Um, you know, it's going to be that kind of shape. Um, now, for it to lock in, um, it's going to drop down that way. So if you've got your table, uh, sorry, you've got your table tilted down on the left. Um, that if we put that right, there's your there's your angle there. So we need to be able to cut <laughs> this wedge. It, it is a lot easier if you've got the, the saw in front of you and you can kind of visualize which way it's going. Basically, um, you want your wedge to come up the, this way um, when you're cutting it from the top down. So when you pull that up, it's going to kind of wedge into the into the workpiece. But it does, you know, you are going to have to kind of think about it a little bit. Um, otherwise, you kind of undercut it. Um, and that's not the end of the world. What it will mean is if we're, if we're doing stuff like that and we've got like the little skinny legs on the camel, um, that they're going to taper to be even thinner. Um, so when you flip the project over and, and kind of punch it up from the back, um, they, those those components can be quite thin. So um, work it out. So when you've got your project on the table, you tilt the, the table or the head, um, that you're going to create that wedge and kind of just kind of visualize that. Sorry, that was a rubbish answer. <laughs> I confused myself then. But it does take a little bit of thinking about and, and just offer your project up to the up to the saw and kind of take that moment to kind of think which way round you're, you're going. All right. Yeah, thanks, Ben. That was that was a great answer. Um, <laughs> so Frederick is asking, he's and, and linked to what you just said there, would it be a good idea to strengthen the legs using CA glue to 
to reduce the risk of them snapping. You could do that. Um, uh, the really thin one is going to kind of um, soak right into the timber. Um, so you could. Um, I wouldn't like it. I don't like super glue in any shape, way, or form. Um, it it just makes a mess, and I you know I stick myself to things. Um, so I yeah I don't really like super glue, but you could use that um, super glue um, to kind of stabilize the timber. Um, but I I wouldn't personally. It, it, it would make a mess if you want to put a, then put a finish on top. It creates a bit of a barrier. All right. Uh, one here from Fuller Blarney says, in future, perhaps a mention in the notes of the blade styles used for the particular project. So maybe we could talk about that. Yeah. So, Fuller, if you just look in the um, links under the um, under the description there, we've, we've got the, the link to this blade. This is the uh, modified geometry blade. And if you get on that page, um, check out Pegasus. Um, they do like a chart. And they've got every blade, you know, the, you could ever want on there really um but yeah check that out on pegasus on our website um click on the link to the uh, the modified geometry number five and um you'll see um it'll sort of take you to the page um have a look at the information downloads and there is a very thorough um worksheet on there or um kind of table of what you need for what material different thicknesses all that kind of stuff okay um yeah, can we just go back and have a look at your test piece? Because Fuller Blarney is saying the same thing here. One way to determine the desired projection is to try to cut in test circles from a scrap piece. Yeah. Um, so similar to what you've done at the beginning, I think, just to give you an idea. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's what I kind of um, perhaps missed that bit. Um, I always will have a test piece. And make sure if you're doing an angled cut that it is the same thickness of the um, – you know, the material you're cutting for your project, because um, that can, um, you know, obviously the thinner the, your piece of wood is, the the steeper the angle is going to have to be for it to kind of grab. Um, so, yeah, it always it's always a good idea to, um, to have a test piece. Um, and it needs to be the same thickness, usually an off cut um, of, of the same piece of timber. All right. Nice questions, though. Thanks, guys. Um, little bit left to do on this one like i say i'm leaving this quite plain but you could go to town with these you could pyro the little camel um eyes you could put a little saddle on there put his legs in um you could put in the the gold frankincense and myrrh so there's tons of information you could put in um to to kind of elevate this project um but we're kind of just going over the the theory the the principle behind it So there's our three wise men. And they, you know, although they're still the same color as the background timber, they cast a little bit of shadow. They can't, they, you know, they give it that nice kind of three-dimensional um, look. And again, you could sand this in. You could soften the, the edges, give it that kind of roundness. As long as we don't go past our, um, you know, our halfway point where it's grabbing, um, we need that friction. Um, they, they really stand out. And that's why I'm not really putting much color and stuff on them. Okay, let's come back over to the to the workbench here. Um, there's something else we want to do. We want to do our little star of Bethlehem. So we're going to make one of these. Okay. Oh, something I wanted to show you where I didn't quite get that right is our star here. Okay, so I was originally going to put this little um, kind of star in but really difficult to get around all these um, points um, to keep it nice and sharp. And I had to drill lots of holes in the side. And by that time, I was a bit fed up with it and a bit annoyed. So we've redesigned the, um, we've redesigned the star to this lovely kind of comet style with its lovely tail um, coming off the back. So, you know, sometimes we don't get it 100% every time. Um, I wanted to show you that, though, because, you know, getting halfway through a project and, and you know, I'd already done my three wise men. I messed up on the star and, you know, it, it was annoying, really. So uh, it, it can be, um, you know, just a, a heads up on that. Um, 
these bits are just scrappy bits. These are left over from um, the birds when we, we cut the 3D birds, the little birds that slot together. And I'm just looking for my stars. Here we go. And what I'm going to do on this one is put a bit of the contrasting timber between the layers. So we've got a lovely um, kind of, uh, it's going to make the gold pop. So I'm going to use a bit of the um, the gilt um, cream on that one. Um, and that is the, the Chroma Craft one we're going to have a look at. Really kind of lovely, strong pigment in that um, gilt cream. So just trying to cut these down to size because then we can save on a bit of glue and a bit of faff. So let's just come around these. Good. So I want the middle one, the kind of middle star to be um, a darker timber. We want our big one on a light one and then we've just got the little one there which we can just pop on anywhere again we're looking at the direction of the grain we want to make sure um you know we're not that way around and then these are very short grained and we could potentially snap those so go with the direction of the grain and just stick on our little star template Nice to see some of the regulars in the chat there. I hope you're all having a lovely day. Cool, I laid it on thick that time. Let's spread a bit of that off. That can go on there. getting close to the edges and you know don't chuck away all these little bits on a scroll saw you know that some of these components are really small so we want to um you know keep these little off cuts um especially these thin bits they're quite difficult to machine sometimes um, and you can save yourself so much bother by having a little kind of scrap pile that you can delve into good so the rest of this is really easy now. Let's go back onto our scroll saw. Um, I'm going to drop this hold down guard. Let's just bring my arm down so we can get that blade in. Quick tension. And my little hold down guard's just going to drop down a bit as well. We need to be able to swing that project around. Good. And then we're just cutting again. Get that blower working for us. And you can cut this out however you want. I want to keep that definition, so I'm doing intersecting cuts that come in to meet one another and I'm bringing my fingers in for support a little bit closer this time with how thin this timber is we don't want it kind of lifting and, and um, uh, snapping so my fingers are coming in real close give us that support Going to come back in that way rather than make lots of uh, small cuts and potentially make it all messy. We come back in. There's just holding on by a a gnat's whisker.
My blower is just um, not behaving itself. I'll just lift it up out of the way there. I see Colin's got another question there. We're just going to do this last little bit and then we can um, get to that. So just down through here. Oops. Again, this bit, get my finger right on top of that star shape. Taking it cut right into that corner. We've got a little relief cut there, so I can come right along this length. And again, just be careful with your feed rate on something like this. Sometimes the upwards facing tooth on these um, modified geometry blade can just pick up on the bottom of the project. And whenever I backtrack out the thing, I always have the teeth facing on the waist side. So it's not to kind of mark the side of the project. Good. Um, let's come just across here. Again, not bothering this stage to um, pick out all of that detail. We're just cutting this star, supporting it right the way along into that spot. And then we've got some little cuts to make here. Oops. Well, that give me a little fright then. When you start getting down to these very delicate pieces, the old nerves start to pick up. Again, I'm going just a little bit wider than what I've done there, or the, than what's on the, you know, the printout of the project. Coming right down into that corner, backtrack out. We're going to come across here to remove that little bit of waste there. And again, I use my finger if you're a bit worried about that, you can always get a bit of the, the waste. That can help to um, stop the project lifting. And I'm just skimming across that bottom bit. Good, so there's our first part of the star. And it's on that nice dark piece of, of tulip. Actually the same timber, um, just from a different different plank we've got a bit of color on this one all right okay so yeah we've got a few questions here firstly did you is that still on two degrees your table or is it it is still on two degrees um matter. yeah yeah good point i should have put that back straight um but it's not going to matter at all it's going to do um on this thickness of timber you're not even going to see that um it, you you won't even see it but yeah, we can. Um, we're not cutting wedges anymore. So let's just pop that back onto one zero degrees, and then we're back up at sorry ninety degrees. I guess it would be on the table. Just to let you know that uh, Maria lost the connection when you gave the answer about which way to tilt the table. Um, <laughs> but don't worry, she says she will backtrack later. <laughs> um, Have fun listening to that, Maria. That was a bit of a. Um, Bit of a funny answer on that one. It's difficult. It's a difficult thing to explain unless you physically got it in front of you. Um, but you, just offer it up to the table. See which way the blade is um, kind of um, tilting or the table's tilting, and kind of envision that wedge shape. For Lablani, it might be interesting to first glue a layer of contrasting veneer, and eventually that would lead to marquetry and inlays. That's quite a clever. Yeah. Process, yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
Um, yeah, Frederick that, that. wants to know, um, what's the thinnest material you have cut? Could you use a thick card for making templates? Yeah, you could use um, you could use card for sure. Um, thin stuff, any thinner than this, and um, it's I turn to ply. Okay, um, you really need that kind of cross lamination when you get any thinner than this. This is about um, four mil, um, and it just you know it it feels a little bit hairy when you're cutting it sometimes that you're gonna um, that something's gonna snap or something like that. Just take your time, nice slow feed rate, um, and um, kind of get that support in close to the blade. Um, for Lebani, again, he's um, interested in seeing a demonstration on making the collapsible or fruit or egg basket um, with the angle cutting technique. Cool. Well, Fuller, the wait is over. We've got... <laughs> <laughs> I got can we come on the main... Uh, sorry, let's go on to the bench. So something else I just wanted to show you, this is very much the um, same sort of technique. It's using that angled cut, and this is a collapsible little fruit bowl. Okay, And what we've done is um, this is all one cut. It's a spiral that goes round and round, um, and there's lots of really nice plans and stuff out there for these types of things. I've seen them um, that chicken shapes, which will hold eggs. Um, these kind of fruit ones get different ones and also when they fix the base down to something they'll have a pin through here and you can kind of lift a handle and as that arc comes around it pulls this up and it kind of sets everything in place um, a really boring demo though because we're, we're, we're just cutting a, a, a circle okay that you can see I've, it's an old pyro practice piece but um, yeah it's you will all be asleep by the end of this demo. It takes about 40 minutes to cut it. <laughs> um, but they're really nice little um, little projects. And perhaps we could, um, we could, you know, do a, um, a little sped up version, Clap if you will. Collapsible egg cup, maybe. Collapsible egg cup, yeah, like that. Maria's, <laughs> um, Maria's just saying she can add a Death Star to her three wise penguins to make a scene. <laughs> a Death Star. <laughs> wow so we've got we've got penguins and star wars that is not traditional christmas <laughs> uh, i like it though it's really cool um what else are we doing here i've got my starter cut i got sidetracked then we're back on the scroll so we're cutting a star so i've got too many switches this time So time's running away for me a little bit. There's something else I wanted to show you guys. This is the bit with that really thick glue on. I can, it's kind of leached through the paper and softened it a bit. Just something like that. Again, always slow down where your two cuts are gonna kind of intersect. You don't want to overshoot it. You'll end up with little um, marks on the finished piece. So always nice and slow when you're um, coming to that kind of finishing bit. Um, this time I'm going to leave this material on to give me a bit more to hold on to when we're, um, when we're cutting this shape. So I've come down that long straight first. And this one kind of curves into that shape, so we get away with not having to do any diagonal cuts. Oops. 
and then resting on the back of the blade. A really useful technique. It shouldn't mark up your um, your project. Obviously, we can only do that with these straight blades, not your spiral blades. That will cut back into the workpiece. That's good. And so let's just come along here. Oops. So I am rushing now. And I've just overshot that one so we can keep that nice definition. And then I'm going to come back in from this angle. There. There we go, another start. And I'm just going to quickly whiz this one out. I should have put this closer to the edge, really, and then we wouldn't have all this waste. Um, and I'm just going to come up this cut here and just take that out. Just want to knock off my little fragile star. And I've got this tiny little bit here. I'm going to use a bit of my scrap to hold that down. Nice amount of pressure onto the table now. And I've got such a little thing, I'm scared it's going to go down the, um, the extraction pipe now. going to get sucked up the hoover. We did it. We're good. So you can um, shape these in if you've got, um, you know, I've got a little bit of a spiky one here, um, but a little bit of abrasive. You'll soon um, take that off. We're good. We've got a little star there. And then just taking off our template. Okay, good. So we've got rid of our, um, our bits of paper. Let's come back onto here. I want to show you this. Um, this gilt cream because it's new to us and I've just fallen in love with it. It's um, it's so punchy and um, vivid. And I've got probably about six pots of gilt cream at home. Um, so let's let's talk about the gilt cream. This is the new uh, Chroma Craft um, gilt cream. Actually, let's come on to on, onto the scroll saw because you can see it better there. There we go. We've got the Chroma Craft uh, Gilt Cream. It's in a tube, um, so it lasts for ages. Like I was saying, I've got loads of pots of Gilt Cream at home, and they've all dried out, um, and so it's a real pain. And, uh, you know, half of that product has gone in the bin. Okay, so we've got another question. Yeah, hi. Um, this is from Philip Lani. He just said um, he might try using a uh, color anodized aluminium uh, for the shooting stars. He's cut one-eighth aluminium on the scroll saw before. 
using uh, petroleum jelly as lubricant. Good idea. Cool. Yeah. There's lots of, if we can come back to that uh, main camera, there, Cole, um, there's loads of stuff, you know, having a look at this new Chromacraft stuff. It's just inspiring us to, to look at lots of different materials. And I've been looking at uh, kind of copper plate and stuff like that. So, you know, keep your eye out and we may be back um, back soon um, doing a little bit of that on the scroll. So cutting different materials and using reactive um, materials to give us some really cool patterns and, and things like that. Jim, Frederick and Maria all loving the Christmas vibe and um, and what you're doing here. So. Yeah, loads more stuff. of that guys to come don't forget yeah yeah we've got lots of christmasy stuff um going on here um so just look at that um let's come back on to our um our bench here you can just see that it's so full of this gold pigment it is just a lovely lovely stuff to use so i'm going around um our star here um, and just smearing this on. And you can see just how kind of punchy that is when it catches the light. The, you know, the other gilt creams I've used are very good. Um, they've got that gold, but they just don't pick up the light like this one seems to do. Um, it is just a lovely stuff to use. And it's just, it's almost like the, it's the appearance of uh, gold leaf. It's so reflective and so heavy with the pigment. They've been really generous to us with that, um, that gold pigment. So you could do it like that. You could kind of fade it out if you wanted. Um, this is really just a little idea to get you guys going. Um, and I would wait for that to dry. In fact, you know, I would put a bit of glue on that before we get it on there. Glue those two bits together. And you start to get these really nice, um, punchy colors. If I just show you that, I know it's not quite there yet, but hopefully you'll see on screen, you get that contrast of color. Um, and let's, in fact, let's come over to the, the scroll saw again. And you get that lovely kind of contrasting timbers and that gold is just, you know, just sings off of the material and it's real eye catching as well. And that, you know, you walk past something and the light catches it, um, you know, draw your eye straight to it. Um, and all I would do is then color the next little gold star and stick that on top and you get those lovely contrasts um, and, and, and just stick it on your on your project piece um but check those out love those um those gilt creams uh chroma gilt um the the gold one especially and there's um there's like a, a pearl blue which i'm very fond of as well <laughs> but yeah really really nice um really nice little projects and, and and things and it makes you think about the the work piece slightly differently as well Okay, so there's our three kings, um, you know, after the star of Bethlehem um, and a, a spot of glue and you can rearrange things like you say um, to, to suit them how you how you want to do it. Okay, so we've got another question. Yeah, Frederick's just asking if you ever tried using the gold foil. The gold foil. Yeah, I have. Um, I've got some um, I've got a fake one and I've got an actual I think it's 24 karat gold. Um, um, it was left over from our wedding day. We were going to decorate the cake with it. Um, but now it's going into projects. It's going into to all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm not sure I've got anything with gold leaf uh, on it, but I do use it. And it has that, um, just like uh, the, the chroma gilt here, it has that same property. It, it just throws light back at you. And it, 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 it catches your eye, especially if you're walking past and the, you know, it, you get that little glint, um, you know, it will just suck your eye in and you're, um, you know, you're, you're kind of captivated already by the, the little piece of art or whatever it is that you're, you're making. Um, so I definitely recommend that. Um, really, um, I, I just use a, a kind of watered down PVA for that one, really kind of low tack. Um, it, it just like gets, gets stuck right on there. Um, but 
yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to use. A little bit fiddly. You've got to use a brush to kind of lift it and manipulate it. Um, so it can be fiddly. Whereas this stuff, you know, you get a splodge on your finger and away you go. You get that, you get that same kind of intensity of, of, um, of color. Um, and it's a lot easier, a lot, a lot more user friendly. And, and what I've, you know, really like about that is the, um, is there's, the, there's no waste because it's, it's not oxidizing in, an em in a kind of open jar or anything like that. It's, it's contained in that little tube. All right. Good. Well, thank thank you so much for for joining us today. Um, we've got some more Christmassy projects coming, um, so you know, stick with us. Um, if you haven't had the chance to uh, to like and subscribe, um, we really appreciate your um, your thumbs up, and we'll see you again soon for another workshop wisdom.